So good morning, everybody. Um, I'm so glad you could be with us today. My name is Lorraine Fairbanks. I'm the Partnerships Manager for Engine Shed. Um, Sophie's going to be answering any questions in the chat and we'll have a Q&A at the end as well. Um, Engine Shed has been working with education charities now for around seven years in the hope to create a diverse workforce for the future. Sadly, we've not been able to continue this work um, during the pandemic, but we hope to start this again. So that's kind of a reason really for convening this workshop. We have worked with the University of Bristol's Temple Quarter Engagement Fund to bring you this workshop today and also the partnerships team at the university to bring BT to present to you. So we're really glad to have them here today. And from Engine Shed and Set Square Bristol community, we have brought Let Us Grow, who have run um, amazing workshops for me at Engine Shed with young people and also do some really interesting stuff as well. And we're um, so grateful to have worked with the West of England Combined Authority Careers Hub and Workforce for the Future project and the University of Bristol's widening participation team to help support the talent pipeline development in schools. Um, the main speakers will be filmed, but not the breakout rooms. So um, we'd love you to have really free discussion in those breakout rooms. But I would be I will be writing a blog about um, the discussions in that, um, which will be published in the Engine Shed newsletter and website on Thursday. Um, but individuals will not be named. So I'd really like you to have that kind of free um, and frank discussion. So that would be really amazing. Um, so we can show the great examples of the work that you're already doing and to express your challenges. So we can hope to address those in the future. OK, so we're going to have a short series of presentations and then we'll split into the small breakout groups for discussions. There will be a comfort break at 11.20 between the two breakout sessions. Um, so um, without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Fiona Doughton, the Careers Hub lead for the West of England Careers Hub. Thank you. Thank you, Lorraine. Um, um, as Lorraine said, my name is Fiona. I'm the operational hub lead for the Careers Hub in the West of England. Um, my colleague Jane is also on this call and she's our Workforce for the Future Engagement Coordinator. So I'm just going to share my screen and hope that the technology works for me. And let's see if we can get that going. Okay, so I'm hoping everybody can see that. Jane, would you like to kick us off? Yes, of course. Hi, I'm Jane York and I link businesses with schools. I'm formerly a teacher and I've got a few myths to share with you today about school engagement. So myth one is you do not have to be a superhero to talk in schools. Fiona, if you could do the next and you will not be facing these characters either. Number three, please. And I have a lot of people that come to me and they say, I can't make a difference to students. They don't feel that they have the right qualities. And I thought I'd just give you a list, a very quick list of that you could make a job seem more tangible. You could share your journey and role, grow those mindsets, plant the seed of the possible, raise aspirations, as a teacher, I've seen that I could moment when literally a light bulb comes on, ignite dreams, and even empower students to find their own superpowers. So you can certainly make a difference. And what can you say? Well, as I said, your journey, your story, expertise, business, what it does and why, who works there, your sector, what it does, how it's developing and what it needs. Fiona and I are absolutely passionate about skills and we often have these chats with our businesses and we ask to sort of highlight the ones you use, but also the ones you're looking for. Skills are not on the curriculum. Projects, what are you working on? Tech, um, real business problems and challenges that students absolutely love those contexts. Thanks, Fiona. Thank you, Jane. So moving on, um... Talking, just talking about briefly about the West of England Careers Hub and who we are. I'm hoping you might have some idea. We work for the West of England Combined Authority. I hope everybody knows who's, who they are. Uh, covering the three unitary authorities of Bristol, Bath and North East Somerset and South Gloucestershire. As a careers hub, we also work with North Somerset because we're part of the West of England LEP as well. And you'll probably know that the industrial strategy from the... Uh, West of England Combined Authority says we want everybody, um, sorry, I've got to move the pictures because we're in the wrong place. Uh, 
let's move that on. We want everyone who works in the area to sort of be able to have the opportunities to take them forward. So things like the Temple Quarter development, it's really important that we see everybody in this population getting a chance to be part of that. The Careers Hub, we work with the 95 state schools and colleges that exist in the West of England region. So that's all of the state secondary schools that we've got. That includes our mainstream schools, our special schools, the alternative learning provision, and of course, all of our colleges. Our vision to affect systemic change. We need everybody to be involved in this change so that young people get the best help. They need the skills, the information, advice and guidance. They need to set high expectations. So that's who we are. So I was asked to talk about what schools, where the schools are coming from, what are the key things for schools. I think everybody knows that key drivers for schools currently include the GCSE and the A-level results. It's how government measures schools, it's how the league tables are created, and however much you talk about league tables and whether you like them or not, they're part of life. So for schools, there is a real driver around what are the results going to be. There's also a lot of moral purpose in schools. Heads understand the need to do the best they can for the young people. Currently at the moment, there's a real focus on where are they going? What's the destination that they're talking about? The impact of COVID is massive and can't be understated. The news again today was, can we make further changes to GCSEs and A-levels because of the lack of curriculum that's been taught, the gaps that there are for our young people and particularly for our A-level students um, or the level three students, the changes they've been through the last couple of years. Attainment is a massive driver. Attendance, obviously we need them in school, otherwise they're not going to benefit from what's going on. Do they meet the requirements that Ofsted says that they're doing what they need to do? And how do they go forward? What's their school improvement plan? All of those things, key things for schools to achieve. In addition to which, of course, they're tasked with all sorts of other bits and pieces. And the careers and strategy, career strategy and statutory guidance comes in alongside that. So we had a strategy that came out in 2017, and that was the one that really sort of turned everything upside down and said, can we have careers hubs? Can we look at Gatsby benchmarks? It was updated in 2021, I'm pleased to say. It also brought in every school having a named careers leader, i.e. you've got one person in a school who has a responsibility for careers and really takes that forward. But it talks about a high quality careers system. And it's about that universal system and having a framework we can work to, which says all of our young people are getting the support they need to make the right choices. Life has never been more complicated for young people than it is at the moment. And the need to make good choices has never been more important, but also never been more difficult, I think. But the aim is that every young person gets an excellent programme of advice and advice guidance, and that is based on their needs, that there's an, a link to them. And the way we do that, is through the Gatsby benchmarks. Um, I love the Gatsby benchmarks. They're not something that came from government originally. They came from an independent foundation called the Gatsby Foundation, who said, what is the blocker, particularly for STEM careers? We don't see this change in young people taking up STEM careers. They commissioned Sir John Holman. He went across the world looking at opportunities, looking at systems that were in place, looking at what we had in the UK. And he came up with a framework with these eight key performance indicators, if you like to say. But the whole point is if a school is working to these, then they've got a reasonable shot at saying we are providing what we need to provide for our young people. The first one, stable careers programme speaks for itself. Are students learning from career and labour market information? Do they understand what jobs are available, basically? Do they understand how to get into those jobs is also a part of that. Is this tailored to our students? Does it meet the needs of what's going on? Do we actually link what goes on in the classroom with what's going to happen to them in the future? Do they meet with employers and employees? Do they understand what the workplace and how different it is? It's amazing, actually, the difference when young people go out on work experience and realise that life is not punctuated by bells every 50 minutes. And actually that the job might take the whole day, not just that one session. Are they meeting with further and higher education? Are we raising aspirations is really key to this. And do they then get that one-to-one -one session with a guidance advisor? So then where that comes to then is, is what are we looking for from businesses? And in addition to doing the day job of whatever your business haps, happens to be, is how can you help to make education relevant for young people? How can we inform them about the amazing range of opportunities? You know, do they know that there are things like medical nuclear physicists, for example? You know, can they understand the kind of opportunities that you have in your organisation? 
are they prepared for life to come? Do they understand the difference between how it works in school and how it works in work? And see the way that they've got the skills that will transfer across. Can we raise their aspirations? Can we challenge their ideas about what men do, what women do, what people that are like this do to make every job a job for people like me? And in, thereby encourage that diversity that the work, workplace really needs. And can we bring the voice of business into education? Really important to think about impact and why is this important? The Education and Employers Task Force have done a couple of different studies to say, how can we make sure the young people see what they need to do and are not going on into sort of a situation where they're not in education or employment? We know that if young people have four encounters with businesses that they can remember, and that is really important that they can remember it, then 98% of them will go on to good, positive destinations. It will also improve their opportunities to earn. And it, there is a direct, direct link between salaries and the, those four encounters. We also know that when schools are applying the Gatsby benchmarks fully, there is a link between that and attainment. Undoubtedly, when young people can see why what they're doing in maths is relevant to what they're going to do in the future, they will focus, they will work, they will go forward. So that's what we're looking for from businesses. How can you help with all of that? And some of the ways that you can help, to be frank, the list is endless, but these are just some of the suggestions. Can you give a talk? Can you provide work experience? Can you support a teacher with some work experience? Can you just do 10 minutes into the curriculum? All of these kinds of things are really important and it doesn't have to be doing a lot. If you can do one 10 minute talk, that's the difference that it makes. If every business can do one thing, then actually then our young people will have all they need and our businesses will have the workforce that they need for the future. At which point, I'm going to hand over to Jane. Thank you, Fiona. So I'm going to be introducing uh, the Workforce for the Future programme today, and it is a free programme for small to medium sized enterprises, giving them support to get their business ready for the future. And we focus on future talent, so engaging the future workforce, attracting future talent, and developing that future talent recruitment pipeline. We look at these future skills. As I said, skills aren't really part of the curriculum that our young people have at school. It's more about subjects. So you could share your expertise with young people, proactively address your skills shortages, and highlight your sector to students. And tech, you know, they don't understand a lot of the tech gaps. So it would be great to get some more tech companies coming in creatives, all the, all the specialisms of our region. And of course, future brand, you know, you've got a new audience that you can communicate with. Not only is it students, it's also parents and communities. What about defining your business brand purpose, um, developing your staff skills and gaining that competitive advantage. There's quite a lot of research by McKinsey that by engaging with schools, you can develop this advantage in the market. Thank you, Fiona. And how do we do this? So I get to talk to businesses that join up to workforce and they really want to engage with young people. So we look at the needs of the business, what your priorities are, and we create a strategy. So with my teaching head, I'm, I say, what about this? Would you like to do this? Um, we can create activities to be delivered to students that are meaningful and impactful linked to your business. But we also now have a list from our careers leaders of events where they're looking for businesses so one of our schools is an academy and they have, they're doing an event for 1600 year nines in March. And I can help businesses get ready for that event if they want, or we have lots of other activities coming up. So it really is a support for you. As Fiona's mentioned, we've got 95 secondary schools and colleges and we can broker an introduction. So you can make some meaningful relationships with a local school, or you might want to look at SEND, looking at EDI, upskilling your staff and you have ongoing business support from that concept to delivery. And all of this is delivered through a package of workshops and brokered support. And most importantly, it's completely free. Um, we are currently running school engagement workshops to train up businesses. And this is the range that we're currently doing at the moment. We will be repeating this in the next few months. 
So if there's any new um, businesses to workforce, we could run through any of those and you get to pick and choose. It's a bit of a menu. And the benefits for business, you can work with the Careers Hub and myself, but we also have this range of support of which you can access all of the partners in Workforce. So whether it's Business West, UWE, an advisor, we've got the colleges, and we now have um, six new partners that joined at the end of last year. So we've got uh, Leonard Cheshire supporting with disability inclusion skills for clean growth. And all, you can visit all of these partners on your journey through the Workforce Programme. So if there's anybody interested in finding out more information, please feel free to contact me. And I know Lorraine's going to be sending out our flyer. And these are our contact details. So, uh, you know, we look forward to hearing from you. We can create projects to help you um, promote your business, but actually you could really be addressing the needs of our careers leaders as well, who are always looking for those businesses to come and support and inspire the students. Thank you. Sorry, Lorraine, I just need to find where I need to uh, stop sharing. Oh. Thanks, Fiona, and thanks, Jane. That was really interesting and really useful, hopefully, to you all. OK, so now I'd like to hand over to Celeste Wallacar, who works in the Widening Participation Office at the University of Bristol. Thanks, Rane. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen as well, so bear with me. Hopefully everyone can see that. Can you all see my presentation? Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Thanks. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Rain. So yeah, my name's Celeste. Um, I work in the widening participation team at the University of Bristol. Um, so I'm just going to talk to you a little bit today about um, some of the work that we do and most importantly, how we essentially engage with young people, particularly through, um, through using schools and colleges um, and just some sort of ideas and concepts about the ways in which we work um, and sharing some sort of best practice of working with young people. So widening participation essentially um, involves diversifying the student population at the University of Bristol um, and improving the representation of underrepresented minority groups. So our mission essentially is to diversify the student body by empowering and supporting prospective students from underrepresented backgrounds to accessing the university. So these backgrounds may be um, groups such as black students or Asian students or mature students, for example. And um, we have a, a wide sort of range of specific groups that we do work with. So we work in collaboration with colleges and um, schools, educational charities, community organisations and with colleagues across the university um, on a wide range of programmes and events that essentially will aim um, to meet our goal. So um, this is just a little taster of an activity, for example. Um, so what we do as part of our role is we also um, engage with a lot of um, staff and colleagues. So we have a lot of academic staff or postgraduate um, students who will deliver certain academic sessions for us, for example. So we run, um, particularly one of my colleagues runs, um, a sort of workshop which demonstrates to those staff who maybe have never um, delivered a session to young people before. Um, and one of the things that we sort of come up with is basically just some really good ideas and some icebreakers when you're working with young people is a great way to engage. Um, so this, for example, is one of those ones that was on um, a recent um, outreach activity of ours, which is Two Truths and a Lie. And just in case anyone's interested, it was fun. <laughs> um, so a little bit of um, insight into widening participation in context. So this sort of visual that you'll see on the screen um, is a really good sort of representation of the way that we sort of might see students in a classroom or a lecture theatre setting. 
So there are some signs that are sort of clearly visible, which you'll see at the tip of the iceberg, such as you know, the grades that they're getting um, and their behaviour you know, on the day in which they're at a certain activity or event. Um, you know, are they sitting still? Are they being attentive? Those sorts of things. However, sort of underneath the water, um, if you like, there are so many more factors that are more difficult to observe and which may explain for the success of a student in their education. For example, their family's support network, uh, they may have not specific resources in place um, to support students with their schooling. Uh, the school itself may have more limited resources. Their past experience may influence their perceptions or behaviour, um, particularly when they're thinking about coming to a higher education context. So we should always bear this in mind when we're engaging with students. Um, you know, if you're running any activity with young people, if that's in schools, for example, it's quite likely that you're going to meet students from a, you know, a diverse range of backgrounds um, who will probably fall into this learning participation ca category. Um, so just to give you a little bit more context in terms of widening participation in Bristol, we have essentially five targets set out in our access and participation plan. So our access and participation plan is essentially targets that we've agreed with the OFS um, that we as an institution are going to improve on um, in terms of diversifying certain groups. We are making some progress, but there's still a lot a lot of work to do and um, so that's why um, it's always great when you know we come in contact with people across the university or wider organizations who are looking to work with young people it's always great to engage um, them with working with specific types of schools um, and, and those sorts of things where you, that will really have an impact um, on their sort of experiences so um, just to sort of highlight what those five things are. Um, so we want to reduce the polar quintile five um, to polar quintile one ratio. And um, so that was the sort of area on that was on the map on the previous slide. And um, that's basically the areas of sort of highest and lowest deprivation in Bristol. And um, we want to increase the proportion of um, Asian students, increase the uh, proportion of black students, increase the intake of our Ventures Trust schools, which are our sort of collective of schools that we um, are sponsors of, and uh, increase the percentage of mature students at the University of Bristol. Um, so this is just a little um, example of something that came from a, a student's perspective. So <clears throat> this came from uh, a young woman called Erica. Um, she was uh, an art uh, undergraduate student at the University of Bristol, but she took part in some of our widening participation schemes. So I think she did, came along to one of our summer schools before she came to the University of Bristol. Um, and this sort of came off the back of that, really, just in terms of talking about what to do and what not to do. Um, basically just managing those expectations. So don't try and force an act of relatability and don't think it's possible to change a student's mind about coming to university in one visit, for example. Um, instead, listen to students as so much as you talk. That's really important to be led by the type of language, for example, they're using. Um, and also just sort of gauging where they're at in terms of what ideas they have, so what do they know about employability, what do they know about certain areas of work, what are their sort of knowledge bases, um, and really sort of getting to learn from them as much as well. Um, so that's sort of, I guess, the top tip advice. Um, in terms of some <coughs> examples of outreach activities that we've run, um, you'll see a few on the board. So for example, our uh, engineering STEM up tower challenge. So that was actually something that we had to end up delivering online. But what we did is we sent out packs to those students um, and they received things like um, to, to make things from home. So they had little sort of like cardboard and paper and things and we sort of sent them instructions and an activity and then we um, interacted with them on, um, on Zoom afterwards. They sent pictures of their towers and things and that was a a way in which we tried to make, even though we had to do the activity virtually, um, trying to sort of make it as interactive as possible. 
Um, and we have got loads of sort of different ideas and ways in which you can make activities interactive. Um, and I believe Lorraine will be sending out a sheet um, after the session, which has sort of lots of ideas and things like that. But that's just to give you um, some ideas there. Um, and then finally, from me, um, just a little bit of, I guess, practical advice in terms of engaging and sort of when you're thinking about delivering sessions with young people, um, be prepared for the unexpected. Always have a backup plan. And um, so, you know, I'm sure you're all aware in terms of those transitions from virtual to physical, you're not quite sure what's going to happen. Um, thinking about if and how you might need to adapt your activity, you know, if you've gone into a session that, um, potentially, uh, you know, the knowledge base is different or things like that. How do you sort of quickly think about adapting those sessions um, and take some resources with you? That's always great um, to have that sort of interactive takeaway home element. Um, linking to the real world. And then just um, it's important to be aware of, of safeguarding, essentially. Um, and that's something that we would always sort of stress um, from our perspective, just to escalate any concerns. Um, and yeah, never sort of promise confidentiality. So that's sort of important things to think about when you are sort of engaging with young people to have those sort of safeguarding expectations um, in the back of your mind. Um, and yeah, just go with the flow, enjoy it. <laughs> Hopefully um, you would get something out of delivering a session with young people and working with young people. It's definitely, um, yeah, great. So that is everything from me. I will uh, stop sharing my screen and hand back to you, Lorraine. Thanks very much, Celeste. That's really, really interesting. I think, um, did someone want to um, go back to the slides that was the map? Are we, are we able to see that? Was it yeah, um, Rahana? Yeah, thank you. I just wanted to take a picture. Yeah, no worries. Was that just about the, um, like seeing the fact that there's quite a lot of red um, of the yeah, Polar that, One quintile? The one in that Bristol. says like Warm Adventures Trust on, that said about like the, 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 the gap. The one before the ladies, testimony okay is that all right Celeste to share your yeah, screen sure, with that, yeah. that one um, thanks the one before the lady testimony yeah this one or was it the one this one yes that yeah. one yeah thank you sorry no no not at all you're welcome yeah perfect thank you so much that's fine Thanks so much for that, Celeste. That's really, really interesting. Um, so, um, yeah, now I'd like to hand over to Laura Price from BT. Thank you very much, Lorraine. Hopefully I'm going to share my screen with you now. <clears throat> can you see that OK? Yeah, we can see that, okay, Laura. Great Thank stuff. you. Yeah. Good stuff. Right. Um, so my name is uh, Laura. I'm employer brand lead at uh, BT Security. Um, I've worked in recruitment, marketing and comms pretty much most of my career, apart from a, a five year stint as careers and employability manager at Bath Spa University. So kind of careers, um, employability and recruitment has kind of been very much at the heart of, of what I've been involved in. Um, and it's really important to, to me. What I'm here to do today is just talk through some of the work and initiatives that BT has been involved in from a school's engagement and employability perspective. Um, just bear with me. Right, for some reason, my presentation isn't working. Mm -hmm. Let me just try again. I'm just gonna stop sharing and try it again. If not, I will just talk through it anyway. For some reason, it does not want to share this one. I don't know why that is. Let me just, I'm going to switch, turn that off. Might be something to do with my screens. Right, really sorry about this. I'll carry on um, without further ado, because there's no point. Um, I can share, I'll share my slides with me after the event. 
So my role is about in really promoting the fact that BT is a great place to work. Um, that's what employer branding is all around, is about. Um, and with BT, there is a bit of a challenge because um, the size and the scale of the organisation is huge. So from a global level, um, we're, we're represented in majority of countries around the world. Um, uh, and we also, our key, our key location is obviously the UK. Um, but we're trying to do things on a global level and also on a local level. So there are lots of different things that are going on at, at any one time. Um, there are a number of uh, different programmes that, that we're involved in. And so from a global perspective, there is things like um, the Barefoot programme, which you might be aware of, which is the programme of schools activities in, in primary schools. There's things like our Work Ready programme, which is for disadvantaged um, uh, people in and around uh, the UK. Um, and there are, are things like our Skills for Tomorrow programme, which you may have seen uh, represented. We've done quite a lot of promotional advertising on TV and things like that. And these are digital programmes um, which we've developed throughout the course of, of the pandemic to promote some of the skills and the future skills that we need for tomorrow. Um, and that's really important because, as we know, there's a real, there's a very big skills gap in terms of future skills um, uh, and what people perceive as the careers of the future. So um, one of the things I'm based in Bristol and um, we have uh, a number of different so security locations in and around the country. So they range from places like Birmingham, Bristol, Manchester, London, Ipswich um, and Cheltenham. Uh, and these are kind of what we call our key strategic locations. And we have the new assembly building that is being built in Temple Way at the moment. So for us, it's a really good opportunity to market that as a, as a, as a great location and a great place to work. When I joined BT a couple of years ago, I was based at St. Clements, which is the telephone exchange building in the centre of Bristol. And I have to say it was pretty grim. And I think of, you know, a lot of um, uh, young people today, they've grown up with new build schools, they might have come from a new build university. So when they walk into the workplace and it's less than impressive, they, they feel a bit put off. Because um, obviously for a company like BT is competing with the likes of you know, Google and Microsoft with all their, their fantastic office space. So we've, we've, we've had to up our game on that. And so what that's meant is we're focusing on um, kind of key strategic locations and shutting down some of our other smaller offices and other locations. And that hasn't been without controversy, but I can kind of see why it's, it's, it's been developed that way um, because we do need to invest in the future of, of our staff. So our object, um, we, we have a number of objectives when, when, when it comes to it. So we're, we're looking very much at raising the profile of cybersecurity, in particularly for security. Um, we're looking at raising the profile of BT and our brand, and that's really important to us. Um, we're looking at the whole DNI agenda, improving the diversity of our workforce. That's absolutely critical in cybersecurity, where particularly um, women are underrepresented, it's typically around 16% of women who work in cybersecurity. Um, so that's really important, but also from a diversity and inclusive perspective, it's been it's quite well documented that people from a neurodiverse background perform well in a cybersecurity uh, environment. So we do work hard to try and raise our, our profile and visibility um, from a, a DNI perspective. Um, we try to use technology to kind of promote our brand um, in schools and actually online. So we do games, we do um, digital escape rooms, we use things like glyphs and QR codes to uh, promote our brand to our audiences. When schools, when we do um, work placements and we get schools to come in and um, uh, be part of the work placement or they join our people, um, apply for our apprenticeship programs, they get sent quite cool gifts and things uh, just to, to kind of get them excited about the use of technology and um, how that can support the brand. Um, we try and bring a little bit of fun to what we do because the world is a serious enough a place as it is. So if we can if we can bring some fun to the table, then that that really we feel helps with engagement. And we've really made a big play of our brand. So although I can't show it to you, um, the We Are Protectors brand that we have has been really key in actually getting people enthusiastic about what we do and who we are. 
the fact that we're keeping people safe, that we've got a real purpose. And we find that message of purpose is, is really, really strong in terms of helping with that engagement, because most people ultimately want to work for good. And, you know, that's very much what we do. We keep the network safe. Um, so, you know, everything you do on your on your phone or on your tablet or on your smart speaker, BT is behind that and keeping people safe. So hence my background, which is probably the only bit of branding that you can see today. We work very closely with external partners as well because it's obviously very difficult to cover all the different um, activities that are going, going on out there. So we work with Cyber First, particularly in their schools hub in and around um, uh, the Bristol and, and Gloucestershire area. We support the um, Cyber First bursary students. We've taken on 22 of the Cyber First bursary students this year. We work with um, Elaine Brown and Yui at, um, with the Un Unlock Cyber event. It was due to run at the first week in January and unfortunately the time has got the better of us with COVID but that's a cyber taster uh, event where there's uh, around about 12 employers that uh, host an event and get um, students to come in, students are bussed in and they have hands-on activities um, uh, which they get involved in and we were going to be running a capture the flag event uh, which was a bit of a mix of a, of a quiz and an actual capture the flag event um, uh, at that event, uh, it's going to be rescheduled. So that's one of the kind of key, key relationships that we have locally. Um, we also work with organisations such as the National Autistic Society, I mentioned earlier, our focus on uh, neurodiversity. And there are also other um, more local levels of relationships that we have in and around the country for that. Um, press, social media, PR also play a big part in terms of our engagement piece. Um, I think it's really critical that all the comms, marketing, um, PR and comms has all joined up. So we have, we regularly run articles um, about what we do, the roles that we have. Um, and for example, this National Apprentice Week that's coming up in uh, second week of February. So we'll do a lot of activity in and around that, showcasing stories of our apprentices, who they are, what they've done, what success they, that they've had. Um, you might. Some of you might know of Josh Calicott, who's one of our uh, cybersecurity apprentices in Bristol. He's from Western College. He's a real poster boy, not just for Western College, but for BT as well. He's, he's done amazingly well in a short space of time. Um, he also has cerebral palsy, but he is, he is an absolute credit to, him, to himself and to everyone who comes in contact with him. They, they all love Josh. So be prepared to see Josh uh, so somewhere coming soon to a place near you, as they say, uh, in February. Um, uh, and then I guess it's not just about Bristol. So Bristol, for obviously, that's where I live. Um, that's where I'm, I'm based. That's where my office is. But obviously, I look, work with security on, on the broadest level. And I'm really closely engaged with the Dastral Park and Kat Carol Fletcher's team who work with the University of Bristol. They have a fantastic schools engagement programme because they have an actual a whole team that just works on schools engagement in and around um, Adastral Park. Adastral Park, for those of you who don't know, it is in Ipswich and it's great because everybody knows it, but also people have perceptions of what it's like. And obviously part of our remit is to show that BT as a company is changing. It's very technologically driven and they have schools, events and visits and activities. And on the PowerPoint slide, you'll see the page that I'll point you to, which is a whole lot of activities that you can you can download and have a go at and have a look at. And they're doing something new for British Science Week this year. So I'd urge you to share that with your contacts. And then just finally, I think the biggest thing we can do around engagement is is our employee advocacy and, you know, to be the authentic um, representation of BT and the brand. Uh, so when you go out to events and activities, you will see that it's always our people there um, uh, and we are the real we are the real people. We are the real protectors. So thank you. I hope that's OK. I'm sorry I didn't you didn't get to see the slides, but I will share them with you after the event. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. I'm really sorry about that as well. Um, That's okay. We'll, we'll get worry. those sent out to you. Um, yeah, to the participants. Thank you. Thank you. Um, brilliant. That's very, very interesting. Oh, sorry. I've been asked to start my video. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> brilliant. Thanks very much. Great. Um, so now I'd like to hand over to Lily Manzoni from Let Us Grow. 
Hi. Um, hopefully my presentation will work, but I appreciated your um, <laughs> talking us through it, Laura. That was great. Um, so let me just try and share my screen. There we go. Can everyone see that? Yeah, I can see that, Lily. Thanks. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Lorraine. All right, so um, my name is Lily Manzoni. I am the Head of Research and Development at Let Us Grow. Um, and today I'm going to talk you through, start off with a little bit about who I am, who Let Us Grow is, and kind of what we do. And I'll kind of end up by talking about the work we do with young adults um, in the Bristol area. So, um, as I said, my name is Lily. I went to uni in Bristol and I studied chemistry and I left the world of work and uh, world of university. And I joined um, Let Us Grow and very quickly realised I probably should have studied engineering um, because I absolutely love it. So now I run a team of scientists, growers, engineers, technologists um, and yeah, at work at Let Us Grow, who's a great company that I love. Um, our mission is to reduce the waste uh, and carbon footprint of fresh produce by empowering anyone anywhere to grow delicious food near its point of consumption. Um, and that's what kind of everyone at Let Us Grow is aligned towards. Um, so who are we? Uh, Let Us Grow was funded by three University of Bristol graduates who wanted to find a resilient solution to our really quite fragile food system. And since then, we've grown to a team of just under 40 employees. We operate um, an office and a workshop and a farm at our headquarters in Brislington, in Bristol. And um, fundamentally, we are a sustainability company. It's right at the core of what we do. Um, we're a really diverse group of people who are very environmentally conscious and they're very caring. Um, and we have a really wide range of skills and people at our company. So we have scientists, we have software developers, we have creatives and marketing um, gurus, we have engineers and business wizards, we have you know all of the different components of a technology business. Um, and yeah, we also have great benefits like flexible working and cycle to work schemes and holidays and things like that, but that's not too relevant here. Um, so yeah, so what do we do? We design and build aeroponic technology and farm management software for indoor and vertical farms. Um, so what does that actually mean? Well, you can see in the picture there, we build these kind of vertical farms. That means what I like to call bunk beds of salad, um, where we grow uh, food for consumption um, and plants for all sorts of reasons. Um, and we do it aeroponically, which means that the plant root, which you can't see in this photo is suspended in an aerosol or a mist, basically like a cloud. Um, and that, that's better than kind of conventional growing because it gives access to oxygen for the roots or greater access to oxygen. So that's kind of what we do. As I said, we build these farms, we design these farms and we sell these farms to customers. So um, the people at Let Us Grow are what I particularly really enjoy. Um, it's a really nice place to work. We have, you know, a dog friendly office and the people fundamentally are really, really ambitious, really caring, really kind. Um, and I, I've seen a lot of people at Ladders Grow kind of grow and flourish. Um, we do work very hard, uh, but we really make sure that we have a lot of fun when we work. Um, and we have a really kind of welcoming, supportive, caring atmosphere um, from like internally, but also our mission is about caring outwardly as well. So some of the things that we do, we host lightning talks, which are five minute talks on something you're interested in, which kind of teaches everybody uh, about something outside of their work. Um, we do online games and quizzes, especially in the world of COVID. Um, we have an internal company newsletter and an OFB, which stands for Organised Fun Brigade, um, who plan our kind of employee excursions. Um, we have done things like renting out a cinema and going to a trampoline park, but we also do things like visit the community farm in, farms in Bristol and kind of work there. Um, so we do a, a whole host of things, but fundamentally it's the people who are caring and open and ambitious. Um, and just generally fab. So what do we do with young adults? Well, you know, inwardly, we're very caring. I, I think a lot of people at Let Us Grow believe that you have to also extend, ex extend that um, principle to the community you're within. Um, so we partnered with a company called, uh, a social enterprise called Babata, who are based in Bristol, and they help um, youth from underrepresented communities 
pursue their ambitions through things like skills training, professional mentoring, um, running events, and they generally help companies with recruitment. So Babasa came to Let Us Grow and they provided us with a company-wide workshop on how to mentor something, which was fantastic because those skills don't just apply for mentoring something, somebody, they're, they're great all-round skills. Um, but as a result of that, we have three employees who are now Babasa Equal Opportunity Ambassadors. Um, and that means that they uh, go out and they engage with the community about, um, you know, making sure that there are equal opportunities for youth from underrepresented communities in our environment. Um, and of those employees, a number of them, are, of those three, they're all mentors. Um, in fact, one of the one of them is on my team. His name is Tom, and he mentors twenty students. Um, some of them through the University of Bristol and some of them through Babasa. And he says, you know, that they're, they're fantastic. They're teaching him loads, he's teaching them loads. Um, and he kind of, he's an engineer, an ele electronic engineer, and he teaches people how to do electronics and it's fantastic. So yeah, so alongside that, um, over the past three years, we've supported numerous Babasa placements. So placements can cover a variety of different departments. Sometimes it's just one that the, the person is interested in. Sometimes it's like a real whirlwind tour of the company. Um, and placements can last anywhere from two weeks to a year. Um, and the year long placements are very, very in depth and focused. Uh, the two week placement that we did uh, was a chap called Kamari. And he said to me, wow, I had no idea that work could be fun. Um, and I, I absolutely loved that. So what else do we do? We give a lot of panels and workshops. So we have annual presentations and question and answer sessions guiding university students and, and other students in how to start a career within the sustainability sector specifically. Um, so we, our HR team um, go out and engage in that way and with multiple universities. Um, our team generally all enjoy talking publicly on panels and workshops about their journey into the world of work and the challenges they've faced and the challenges we've faced as a company. Um, so I think that's really important as an engagement exercise. Um, I did something with a colleague called a STEAM Schools Broadcast, which was a virtual broadcast to school children talking about our technology in a kind of technical and scientific way. Uh, it was really fun. We've done events with um, Engine Shed and Set Squared, such as Into University, uh, a future Brunel activity day where two people from our team gave a presentation about Let Us Grow and then ran kind of interactive games and workshops and quizzes for the kids that were there and generally had a great time, really enjoyed it. And then we've also done something called a, we've done an exhibition called Take a Bite Out of Climate Change, which uh, toured I believe uh, it started off in London and went to various other places with the Royal Society and did a lot of kind of engagement with children there. Um, and it was yeah really impactful, I believe. Um, additionally, we work with school children, but we also work with universities. So we offer an annual year in industry placement with students on an engineering course at the University of Bristol. Um, and additionally to that, we've run placements and research projects with about 20 other university bachelor's, master's, PhD students across multiple disciplines to give them kind of an insight into the world of work. Um, and we continue to do this and, and generally love it. Um, so yeah, we do a lot of engagement. Um, Maddie was a previous placement with Bristol um, and she, she basically got to choose where she wanted to work and what she wanted to do uh, and which team she wanted to work within. Um, we don't really believe in kind of getting a placement and asking them to kind of sort the stationary cupboard. So we give them a big challenge and, you know, push them as much as they want to be pushed. So Maddie specifically was able to work with an external company to install some of our technology in their farm. And it involved, you know, she managed the project, she bought the parts, she assembled the parts and she ran a growth trial um, and installed the, the big bed uh, at their facility in Scotland. So she got to go on a couple of road trips, which was cool. Um, so yeah, she, she, she learned a lot, I think, um, but she also grew in confidence and just learned a lot about the world of work uh, and generally had a nice time as far as I can tell. Um, so I guess the most important thing is, is why we do this, what the value is to let us grow, but also to the students uh, that we are working with, because that's the most important part. So personally, I believe it's all about 
you know, promoting diversity within technology or within different fields. So we work a lot uh, on providing young people, particularly those from underrepresented communities with opportunities in technology. And we really believe it's important. Um, you know, with Babasa, you know, these students that we've been working with and the placements we've had, quite a lot of them don't have a family member who is in the world of work that they can look up to. So just kind of showing someone the environment that we work in is really helpful. Um, and as part of that, we like to help young people identify with other people, maybe who look like them, who've had similar journeys to them, um, but are just a bit further along that journey so you can see yourself in a work environment. The kind of opportunities we provide, uh, we like to display a healthy work environment, a healthy work culture and healthy work habits. Too often people, you know, start their career and go straight into a really toxic environment and don't know that that's not okay that it's not okay. Um, so we like to kind of give a positive example of what a healthy work environment is. And kind of on top of that, showcasing the exciting jobs that we have and the journeys you know, into those jobs and, and how people got there in interesting industries and teaching about our industry because it's new and disruptive um, and hopefully try and inspire some careers or not, you know. Um, and on top of this, let us grow really benefits as well. Um, so it really kind of reinforces why we do what we do. It reinforces that it's a privilege to do what we do. Um, and it brings us a diversity of opinion and a fresh new perspective on how we do things and why we do things. Um, so, yeah, that was a bit of a, a whirlwind tour of the things that we've been doing at Let Us Grow uh, with kind of community engagement and uh, uh, placements and that sort of thing. Uh, my name is Lily. If you have any questions, feel free to kind of ask me in the chat or email me. Um, additionally, Chelsea, who was supposed to be giving this talk, is our people and culture manager as well, and I'm sure she'd be happy to talk to people. Thanks so much, Lily. That's really, really interesting. Great to see all of the variety of different work that you're doing, and thanks again for all of the workshops that you've done for us and being on the Ada Lovely Stay panel a couple of years ago, oh, yeah. which is fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think everyone's back from the breakout groups now. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for um, all of your really in-depth discussions. I was popping in and out of some of the groups um, and um, yeah, checking out some of the discussions. So it's really interesting. So I'd like to ask um, uh, each of the facilitators to just um, feed back uh, one by one, if that's OK. So if we can start with Jay, that would be great. Yeah, we had, we've had some really interesting chats about um, things we'd like that have gone better um, and how that often is a, is a way forward in our learning. Um, so we were sort of talking about, I think Laura gave an example of perhaps not having the best people there or, or they thought they were good, but when they're actually in front of the students, they're not the most, sometimes not the most inspiring. Um, and I think Ben was giving an example of the actual um, this type of students that were chosen for an event so sometimes it's it's making sure that those expectations align so that we've got I think that he was saying that they had A-level students and they were perhaps more focused on a BTEC vocational route so it's making sure that we've got things like that but we've had a really interesting chat and I've learned a lot more about BT and Envision um, and there's, I think we felt there's a lot to take away from this discussion. So thank you for all saying thank you for having us. Brilliant. Thanks, Jane. Um, can I hand over now to Fiona? Thanks, Lorraine. Yes, some really good discussion, actually, um, covering quite a lot of different approaches and, and where things are going um, and some really good activity already going on. But where can we go beyond this and how do we go forward? Um, what's not gone well conversation was quite interesting and covered quite a wide range of different things but particularly touched on how difficult things have been over the last couple of years the introduction of hybrid and virtual and where we go forward from that yeah. so I think that was something we came through the theme that came through from both conversations really was the need to look at having an impact and how do we evaluate so yeah. getting that feedback if you are doing anything getting that feedback to say this is where the difference has been made um, and understanding what you can do to improve so yeah. that constant reflection on, yes, it may have gone well, but can I do things better? And no, it hasn't gone as well as we hoped. Can I do something better? And if you understand what's gone wrong, then that will make a decision about, it may not be we don't do this anymore. It may just, we need to change it. 
So both those kinds of things. Yeah, and that's it. Really interesting discussions because we have that same discussion in the Cornerstone Employer Group, don't we? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. So that's really interesting. Brilliant. Thanks. Um, if I can hand over now to Celeste. Yeah, thanks, Rain. Um, yeah, we had some really interesting sort of discussions going on and some interesting sort of pieces of work that people were doing. And um, we spoke, uh, I guess, a bit about um, the, that sort of initial starting point, thinking about um, developing and, I guess, working with or identifying the right audiences to work with and um, some of the challenges in terms of how niche or do you go how much do you constrain your target audience how broad do you have your offering depending on you know what it is that you're trying to um to come up with or the, the aim that you're trying to to reach um and we spoke a, a bit about um sort of how you you grow an idea or a concept um and how you can sort of feed that and also about adapting it to different audiences so depending on um we, you know, we had an example of, um, you know, adapting some of the work they were doing, um, transitioning into working with um, corporate companies and things like that. So how did they sort of align or change what they were doing um, in, their, in their working, in their activities? And we also spoke about reflecting and the importance of sort of gaining feedback, um, particularly in the early phases of activities and working with young people um, in terms of getting that feedback and um, then adapting or improving on um, the resources or the content of your activity. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, really important. Thanks so much, Celeste. That's brilliant. Um, hand over to Berna now. Thank you very much. And uh, we had also very good, very positive discussions. Uh, we, very quickly, we discussed what do we do? And I asked the question, why do we do this? What are you trying to achieve? And we ha I have really positive uh, uh, comments, which I expect to hear, um, to add value to uh, young children's, young people's lives. And uh, Iris from Oracle said, we have, uh, we have to take responsibility to give something back to those young children. And uh, Laura said, for example, uh, not everybody um, have access to tech education. And then she said, this shouldn't be privileged. Everybody should have access to tech education, no matter what, which was really really yeah. positive and I asked them how do you know it is working and Caroline for example she said well not so much statistically but may we can tell from their eyes how they behave beginning of the workshops and the end and the behavior changes and um, there were lots of comments about we talked to their teachers their trainers and uh, that's how we know it is working and um, also there was a very good comment and I think uh, participants agreed on that. There are good offerings from the university and to help uh, charities and companies to engage with young people. But that, those offerings are not always so visible to everybody. Mm -hmm. So we called it a little bit potluck. I called, I called it potluck. They said, oh, it's not even potluck. <laughs> you know, I think maybe one comment we can make, what is on offer from the university should be maybe structured, maybe should be on a one website. So people who want to take advantage of them should be able to go and see all of them and choose maybe one channel. Yeah, yeah, that's really helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. Um, so finally, if I can hand over to Ruth. Yeah, thank you. I love that evaluation. It's like you can see by their eyes. I think I'll use <laughs> yeah. that, so all evaluations. So we have a small group, just a couple of us in there. Uh, so we also started just to understand a bit more about each uh, company and where they were sort of in a growth phase. Um, one person wanting to move from working in London to maybe also expanding out into Bristol. So we talked about some practicalities about how that how we can make connections. Um, and then we talked about um, some of the sort of things that might hold people back. So obviously understanding that having site visits, having the schools visiting the company site can be really impactful, but actually, can you manage the risk? Is it safe in that sort of physical environment? And so we talked about that. We talked about the importance of safeguarding and making sure that everyone is up to speed on the latest training with safeguarding and that makes everyone just feel more confident and uh, you know, uh, happy that it's all gonna go well. Uh, we talked about just practicalities about how to engage with new schools, how you might approach those schools. Um, uh, we just talked about so many things. We touched on a lot about increasing the diversity of the workforce and how you would reach out in lots of different ways to lots of different um, groups. And um, just such a positive 
ability for SMEs to actually really do it and enact it within the company. So yeah, yeah fantastic. It's a uh, fantastic discussion. Amazing. Thank you so much, Ruth. Um, yeah, so uh, I guess, um, has anyone got any questions that they would like to ask of any of the panel that we've had today? Do you want to do a hands up on the Zoom? Or any questions in the comments is fine as well in the chat. Um, is it possible to have um, the information from the slides? Um, yeah. The, the, first, the first information slides? Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's all, that should all be possible. I can get that for you. And there are also going to be some um, handouts um, that uh, Celeste and um, Jane had sent me and, and something that I've uh, produced as well about working with education charities that um, have opportunities for businesses as well. So um, I'll send all of those things. Oh, perfect. Thank you. After the event. Thanks. Was that Rahana? Sorry. Sorry. Can't yeah. see on the, yeah. I, 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 I think it was Laura from BT. I know she said we're getting the slides, but I wanted to ask um, where does BT sit with like the education side? Because I know we spoke about like the security side, but does like BT have like an education side and that kind of side as well? We have uh, like a CSR team, is, is that what you mean? Or there is the education I mean, team that's. Sorry, I don't know what that means. Uh, or is that based, it's based at, um, at so the, our education team is based at Astral because that's um, got a very uh, kind of active schools engagement team. Um, we have a, a, a corporate social responsibility team who run all our skills for tomorrow programmes. Yeah. So possibly that's who, who you mean. Um, most of their programmes are currently that are running are digital. So it's up to um, kind of individual offices, locations to support the schools in the area as best they, they can. Um, so I just look after security um, and there's probably somebody else of me in a, all, our, all our other um, different uh, business units. So that's the challenge of working with a large organisation. There's lots of different people. But if you come to me, I can perhaps find someone if you need a different right. area to Perfect. explore. Thank you. I will do. I'll contact you on LinkedIn. Thank you. Brilliant. And I think Jane had a question. We'll make this the last one. Yeah, it was just to say, if, if you're a business and you're looking for support to go into schools, then by all means, contact me. But also, if you know other businesses, um, if they haven't been here today, feel free to share my de the information that you'll receive about Workforce with others. And I'm also on LinkedIn if you can't find me any other way. It was just to share that. Jane is super great on LinkedIn. So, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. OK, um, so, yeah, just to say a thank you um, so much to all of our speakers and facilitators today. Really, really appreciate their time. And um, I really appreciate all of you as well um, giving so much in the workshops and, and telling us all about your experiences, because we hope um, we can take this forward in some way and, and try to address your challenges in any way that we can, but also to promote the amazing work that you're doing so I'm really grateful thank you um, so um, if anyone's interested in working with engine shed uh, we're currently doing a um, TikTok project um, working with um, some of the local primary and secondary schools so we're looking for businesses to engage in that project and um, so that will be with year nine and year six pupils um, so please do uh, drop me a message and um, yeah we can have a discussion about that I'd be really interested to do that um, if you're interested in following up on any of these discussions around supporting schools or funding any activities, then we'd be keen to hear from you as well. Um, and we're also going to offer some uh, venue hire um, to networks that want to get back together um, to kind of bring together businesses um, around um, tech, creative, um, sustainability, those kind of topics. Um, so if you're looking for some kind of venue space to, to put something like that on, then we'd be really keen to, to hear from you as well. And um, yeah, start opening things up um, and bringing people back together. 
Okay, so um, yeah, that's kind of it uh, to wrap up. Um, and thank you so much for all of the things you're putting in the comments as well. Really appreciate that. Everyone saying hi and sharing your um, company details and free magazines and things. So um, yeah, thank you so much for all of that. And um, yeah, we'll end it there and hope you've had a good morning this morning. Thanks so much. <laughs>